Welcome to the 19th Proof Animals Have Souls and Psychic Show, produced through Passionate World Talk Radio, a subsidiary of Global Media Network. If you've listened to my show before, you'll know I'm a psychic psychical researcher, a spiritual historian and lecturer, and decades-long vegetarian for compassionate reasons, and author of three books. These are Proof Animals Have Souls, 500 Plus Celebrities Go Vegetarian, and Moses and Jesus the Shamans, and Shamans are Mediums. And listeners will come to realise I am passionate about compassion and respect for all animals, including the human animal. The human animal is a primate and a mammal, and we often forget that. And also I'm passionate about my long-standing research into shamanic, out-of-body, near-death experiences and mediumship. And for me, both the evidence of survival through mediumship and near-death experiences accounts not only provide some of the best evidence for after-death survival for all beings, but also provide details regarding the after-death landscapes that appear to be responsive to and shaped by our predominant thought patterns. Um, my two books in my Proof Animals Have Soul series, which can be read independently of each other, is Proof Animals Have Souls and 500 Plus Celebrities Go Vegetarian. And my third book being Moses and Jesus the Shamans. These are all on my website, which is www.jackie, Jones, J O N E S, Hunt, H U N T, dot com. Um, and if you click on those book images on my website, it will take you to the Amazon sites. So I would today I would like to introduce you to a medium, Susan Bowman, um, who lives in Lancaster in England, in the northwest of England, and he is she is sorry the vice president of Lancaster Spiritualist Church, which is a great honour to have Susan here. And Susan serves Blackpool Spiritualist Church, Fleetwood Spiritualist Church, and the two churches in Morecambe, which are all in the Lancaster area, on the west coast, going north of Liverpool in England. So I'd like to welcome Susan to the show, so it's a pleasure and it's an honour to have you, Susan, as the Vice President of Lancaster Spiritualist Church on the show. Hello, Jackie. Thank you for asking me. Um, how long have you been a medium, Susan? Uh, about 33 years. Well, that's almost a lifetime, isn't it? <laughs> yes. Uh, do you do one-to-one -one sittings? Yes. Okay. Um, how old are you, Susan? 73. So it is a lifetime's work with you. Mm. And yes. you mentioned you'd had gender surgery six years ago. Um, yes. So it is an honour to have you on the show. Thank you. Um, as a medium, would you like to tell listeners what your abilities are? Are you clairvoyant that you see? Clairaudient yep. that you hear? Claircognizant that you know? Clairsentient that you sense? Or do you go into trance? If you could elaborate on any of that, I'd be grateful. Well, yes, I do. Uh, I do all of them, uh, especially I do trance. Um, and I have a, a lady who comes to me every week and we sit down and we let people talk through us. Uh, and um, we get some quite interesting results. Well, that would be I excellent. Also, yeah. <clears throat> the... I've had a friend whose dog died on Sunday. Yeah. And she didn't know what to do. So I took her and the dog back to the vets because he'd seen him only a few days before. And of course, on Sunday, the vets are closed. They can't even offer me anywhere to go to take him to, for their help. She wanted him put to, uh, she wanted him cremated. Yes, because he'd passed so, away at home, I see. Yeah, he passed away at home. Uh, so, <clears throat> because he was starting to warm up a little bit, I took him home and I put him in my fridge 
and I waited for her to give me a ring that she'd found somewhere. So <clears throat> about an hour later, she, she phoned me. She said, I found a, pre a pet crematorium that will take him. So I went round, picked her up, and I took her down to the pet crematorium. Yes. Well, as soon as we were ushered into a room, she put him on the table and I was comforting her because she's very upset, obviously, as, as I would be. Yes. And out, out the corner of my eye, she walked in and it was, hello, what are we doing here then? And that was telepathic to me. Well, And I that was, was from away. the dog. And what is the dog's name? Yeah. Harry. Harry. Yeah. And it, I was just so blown away with that, but was I was t trying to comfort his mum, yes. uh, my friend, So I, I, and I've never had it happen like this before, so I just I didn't ignore it, but I told her once we got outside what had happened, but because she was in a state anyway. Um, when we got back to her home, I said, well, you need to l listen out for him or see if, you, if he barks or if he uh, runs about, and she said to me, well, I've done that. So uh, apparently when she hangs the washing out, there's two dogs, she's got two dogs. The other one's already out in the garden and she just ought to said, right, who's going to help me hang out the washing? And she said, it's good to be, I heard his claws on the lino floor in the kitchen come across to the door. Yes, yeah, so she heard his so, footprints, yes? Yeah, yeah. This morning as I was trying to get out with my Obi dog, um, there he is, fighting to get past me to get in. Yes. So that was uh, Harry again, trying to get in? Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, because of his, okay, his, so his, to summarise that then, at the crematorium with the dead body of Harry, mm, yeah. um, you heard Harry communicate with you, saying, what mm. are we doing here then? And yeah. then at home, um, Harry's human mum... Um, heard his footsteps and then yeah. when you're putting your dog out um, you see and hear Harry rushing into your house yeah so that's yeah. amazing do you think Harry's feeling lost or do you think he's feeling okay no uh, he's feeling okay oh that's the important thing in case he was feeling lost and running back home yeah, yeah. no um, she's left his bed out and a toy and obviously the other dog's got food out anyway so if he wants it he can still find it the one thing that pleased her was i was the only person that he didn't run away from when i first met him yeah and i said well i got down on the floor it's a lasso apso or what it's called yes they're not they're not big yes well, if you if you're towering over a dog it's much easier to get them on the floor and make friends with it. That's what I did, and that was he'd, he'd always come up to see me. Oh, that's lovely. Are they the type of dog that they say a Buddhist monk's reincarnated? Yeah. I wonder yeah. if he is a Buddhist monk reincarnated. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I never got round to asking that one. Okay. But as as for being a guard dog, he was the biggest coward go. <laughs> came through the door, he was round behind the settee before they got in. Oh, what a sweetheart. So you feel they communicate with you telepathically, for example. Is it telepathic well, or did you hear, yes. well, you said you heard Harry speak. Well, but it was, it was in your mind. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. do you pick up their feelings? Yes, yeah. That's um, wonderful. I, I was at a church in Oldham. Yes. And I, I got to the clairvoyance and on the handrail was this wonderful big amazon parrot you know those red green yellow blue things yes and i said well i'm sorry i don't know who i'm with this i said but i described the parrot and they all laughed so the person said i need to tell you that it belonged to one of our members yes and she she always said because this thing's pecking away at the handrail it's standing on, pull it, pulling strips of it off. Uh -huh. Apparently, she, this old lady used to say it was absolutely perfect, didn't do anything wrong. And after she died and they got in the house, it had shredded the place. Oh, my goodness. Yeah, huh. yeah. 
So it was obviously uh, showing behaviour problems because it was upset yeah. because she died? Yeah, yeah. What keeps you motivated in your work, Susan, as a medium? Oh, seeing the smiles on people's faces. It is absolutely wonderful. doesn't matter how far you've travelled to the church, but you say something and the, the person that you're talking to lights up immediately. You know you've got, you, you, you've hit the nail on the head, so to speak, with what you're saying. I just feel so happy over it. Yes, well, that's, that's um, when you give, you receive... Um, is there anyone in particular who's inspired you on your spiritual path? My second wife, she took me into a spiritualist church in Watford, in Middlesex. Oh, no, sorry, Hertfordshire. She, um, and the lady on the door, her arms round me, gave me a kiss and a cuddle and said, come in. And I walked in there and I knew I'd walked into the right place. And it was that, I didn't realise what I was doing, but that was when I made my contract with Spirit to work for them. That's lovely. I've been into spiritualism for, oh, since the 80s, and we got married, my husband and I, in a spiritualist church in Coventry um, mm. 31 years ago, Parkside Spiritualist mm. Church. Mm. Um, mm. Eric Hatton and um, another lady... Um, whose name escapes me at the moment, um, were particularly fond of that particular church. Um, mm. Do you have a spiritual message you'd like to share with listeners? Yes. Just be aware that they are there with you. They want you to succeed always because you are an advocate for them and they would like you to keep going with your good works. Well, that's nice. Thank you. And that's helping people to develop their mediumship. Do, yep. do you yes. do that at the churches that you work at? Yep. Do you help people yep. develop their mediumship? Yeah, I'm going to circle tonight. Well, it would be nice to come along to your circles and to your church because your church isn't that far away from us. No, And you feel that, right. um, I do too, that mediumship develops through meditation throughout a person's yes. life. Um, yes. I was a very close person to Gordon Higginson, the former uh, president of the Arthur Finlay College down yes. in um, yeah. Essex, which trains yeah. mediums and gives out philosophy. Um, That's right. And Gordon said that he spent more years in meditation than he did in sleep. Um, and he was doing that since he was the age of three. And the little mm. chair he had in his circle that the mother put him in, they had to cut mm. the legs of the wooden chair so that his little feet could touch the floor. Oh, lovely. Oh, lovely. Do you have any yeah. exceptional experience? We've, it's 13 minutes now and we're coming towards the end at 15 minutes. So do you have an exceptional experience that stands out in your mind? <laughs> or have I caught you on the hop there? <laughs> no, no. The day I got married the first time, I was standing outside my it was to be and somebody said, don't do it. And I turned around to see who was there and there was nobody there. And it went on. I had 15 years of yelling and shouting. Oh, that's horrible. Yeah, I know. I know. So you came I out of that relationship and then married later on with, was that yeah. second person your soulmate? Yeah. Yes, absolutely. You just needed absolutely. to wait for your soulmate. Yeah, that was it. Um, when my Lynn died, she died in my arms. The following morning when I took the dog that I had then out for a walk, I shouted her name out when I got outside the front door and all I could hear in my head was, I'm free, I can fly. Oh, that's And then the wonderful. next day I did the, exactly the same thing and all I could hear was, I'm out of pain. Oh, so... And it was one. And do you, do you see and hear her from time to time? From time to time, yes. I'm sure that helps relieve the grief oh, and the uh, uh, and the sadness and missing yeah. each other. Yeah, quite. They say mediums was... are the best counsellors, best bereavement counsellors, <laughs> because instead yeah. of remembering how they die, you um, are in an onward-going relationship with them. 
Yeah. And because people oh, yeah. often, the, the last thought is of how they passed and their mind sticks with that and their grief sticks with that rather mm. than um, how they then wake up like near-death experiences describe and how mm. they find they're with other family and friends so they're having meet and greet there but the sadness yeah. of leaving people here and how their life mm. continues and that's how we yeah. should see them, not just see them as the person who passed on the on the bed or in the hospital, but the person mm. who's in an onward going relationship with you. Yeah. Well, the time has come to an end, Susan. Oh. So I will okay. say goodbye, and I'm Thank sure you, we could, should speak well, again well. on other things in the future, and look forward okay. to seeing you again. Thank you very Thank much, you Susan. Thank Bye -bye. you. Bye.